Hi, it's Thornell with Wave Living Recipes. And in this box, I've got the Breville Combi Wave 3 in 1. It's a combination of microwave, air fryer, and convection oven all in one. So let's get it unboxed. All right, so here's the main box it comes in. I'll just turn it. You can see kind of the back side of the box where they give you some promotional statements there. But let's get this out of this big box. All right, the first thing out of the box is the microwave, you know, glass bottom table there. So here the Combi Wave is in all its splendor. And I'm just going to get some tip off the back here. All right, here's the plug. Looks like it's about a, probably a four foot cord with uh, three prong. It's going to open up here. We'll see what's inside. So here we have a uh, nice manual. No uh, recipes in this manual. They have recipes at their website. But looking around, I, I wasn't able to easily find them. All right, in here is basically your spinner for the glass turntable of the microwave. And this is what they call the crisper pan. And this is a uh, rack. But this crisper pan has its own legs that pop out. And so you can use these to set it up when you need it in a higher position. In this crisp pan, basically the microwave tells you when you should use it depending on the options you select. So we'll get into that later, but it has a, you know, a display that shows you exactly when to use it and when not. Now at this time, this unit costs basically $450. You can't get a deal on this anywhere. Um, you know, it's sold on like William Sonoma website for $450. And William Sonoma's website, even though if you sign up for their mailing list, they give you 15% off of purchases. It doesn't count for Breville items as well as some other brands that they sell. So you can't get 15% off at William Sonoma, even if you sign up for their mailing list. Best Buy has it also, also for $450. And with Best Buy, there's no discounts or anything. But if you buy through Best Buy, they do have like their elite members program if you spend enough with them. You know they'll give you certain privileges also as you build up points you get like basically like two percent back like in five dollar increments of all your purchases over the course of a year and so i got this through best buy just to kind of like help build up my points there that seems like the only way to get this cooker and maybe get some type of a kickback of some sort off of the uh, full price but it's not sold in many places at all now i'm just going to run you through some of the specifications here. The power consumption is 120 volts, 60 hertz. Microwave input power is 1200 watts. Convection input power is 1400 watts. The grill input power is 1100 watts. The microwave output is 1100 watts, 2450 megahertz. The dimensions of this cooker are 12 and a half inches in height by 20.4 inches in width, by 20.2 inches in depth. The glass turntable is 12.4 inches. The net weight of the Breville Combi Wave is 25.6 pounds, but in the packaging and all, the shipping weight was about 44 pounds. The oven's capacity is 1.1 cubic feet. And Breville mentions here that it comes with a one year limited warranty. This cooker's oven temperatures range between 100 degrees Fahrenheit and 450 degrees Fahrenheit for the convection oven. The minimum clearance is 8 inches all around. You want to leave about 8 inches. And this cooker doesn't have a meat probe, but we know that, you know, even though the Amazon Smart Oven has its issues, it does have a meat probe. So for this type of cooker, a meat probe can be included if the maker wants to do that, but Breville didn't do that in this case. 
All right, now that I've got this cooker set up, I want to give you a look inside. And here inside, you can see over here on the left, we've got basically just a sidewall. Over on the right is just the light as well as some electronics over there in that box. The fan and everything are in the back, so all of the convection fan work is going on in the back of the cooker. Of course, you've got the plate, well, the turntable on the bottom there. Up top, you see the heating element that is used by the air fryer and the convection oven. And now that I showed you inside, I want to show you closing the door. It's a very interesting soft close feature. So let's say I just want to slam the door. Let's do that one more time. Go slam the door. You see how it stopped me? It stopped and it closed slowly. Now if I just close it slowly, you can see that it completes the close for me with that same slow pace. Now regarding the accessories, this uh, they call the trivet. And this is supposed to be used when you're doing like convection oven work and you want to put a like cooking pan in there. You use this so that you're not putting like your baking pan on the glass uh, turntable. You put it on this trivet when you're doing your convection work. With the crisper pan, the crisper pan, if you've got to set it low in the microwave, you just put its legs in like they're in now and set it right on top of the glass turntable. If you want to have it stand tall, you stand the legs up like that and you can put those on the turntable and you've got it in its high position. Now something to point out regarding using the crisper pan for air frying. This pan doesn't have holes like uh, traditional air fryers have. So you basically are going to have all your grease and stuff collect in the pan, unlike other air fryers where the fat and grease can drip off. But for you who like to keep all your grease and fat in your meat, this uh, is probably going to be something you especially like. So now I want to do a test of the temperature, you know, going up to the hottest temperature using air fry. And so what you have to do, you got to put the pan in there, the crisper pan with the legs down so that it's up in the higher position. So putting that in there. All right, now I'm going to hit the air fry button. And now that I'm in air fry, it says you use pan legs. So it's letting me know, use the pan legs, you know, since I'm in air fry. Now I'm going to, basically, I'll just leave it at the 10 minutes time that it has set. I'm going to adjust the temperature up to 450. You can do for air fry, you can do between like between 400, 425, 450. That's it. Those are the only temperatures you can air fry at. And now I'm going to hit start. And what it does, it starts a three minute preheat. It's supposed to be able to get up the temperature in just three minutes. And it's only using the air fryer, not using any microwave functions at all to get up to 450 in three minutes. We'll see what happens. All right, the three minute preheat is almost up. I'm gonna check temperature now. It's reading 392. Down bottom, it's only reading in the 100s. On the side walls, we're in the 200s. The pan is just about 400. It's holding at about 390. So the pan gets really hot. I'm gonna let it continue. I'm gonna click the start to just let it run for a little while into that uh, time that it's set for. But basically in three minutes, it gets the pan up to about 400 degrees, just under 400 degrees. So in three minutes, that's pretty good. That's very good in just three minutes to get to just about 400 degrees. It's only getting the pan up to that temp. And so the combination of the pan and the heating element are supposed to heat your stuff pretty quick when you're doing your air frying. I'll bring you back in a moment after this is uh, run for some minutes. All right, so I've let this run for five minutes of cooking time plus the three minute preheat. So it's been going for eight minutes. So we're gonna see what the temperature is now. And it gives a chime to, anyway to flip the food halfway. We're reading 417. We're reading 417 and you know, it's starting to drop some. Well, it's reading 47, yeah, 412. Some areas are a little lower as I keep the door open. Still down under the microwave on the, 
the plate, I mean on the turntable it's like 200, side walls are still at like 200, so it's still all focused in the pan, the pan's still over 400, so pretty good, it doesn't hit the 450, but it does go over 400, and you know, in just 8 minutes time it still blows something like the Amazon Smart Oven out the water to get anything, you know, good and hot in that amount of time. Alright, so just going to give you a quick overview of the various buttons on this Breville Combi Wave. So there's the Fast Combi button. You click that and it tells you you can use the pan even though Fast Combi uses a combination of microwave and convection cooking. This is a feature that is able to work using the crisper pan with the Fast Combi feature. And you basically set a time, you can set temp as low as 300, as high as 450. The next feature I'm going to show you, or the next button I'm going to show you is the From Frozen button. From Frozen, it basically has some presets. You can select what meat you want. So like if I click Start to go in the chicken, then I can say how many ounces of chicken, and I can go as low as 8 ounces all the way up to 2 ounces from Frozen. I mean 2 pounds from Frozen. If it's fresh, you can do like a four and a half pound chicken. Next button is the air fry button, and it tells you to use the crisper pan with the legs. You can adjust from 400 up to 450, you can adjust your time. Next button is the oven button. The oven, you use the trivet, you don't use the crisper pan, and you can set your uh, time you can set your temperature from as low as 100 to as high as 450. Next button is microwave. So I hit microwave, and it's basically a microwave oven here. You wouldn't put any metal in. You don't put the crisper pan in. You can adjust your time. You can adjust it up, you know, as far as or as low as you want, and you can also adjust your power level by basically spin this top one to do your time you spin this lower one to adjust your power level so that's how you can easily adjust your power level on your microwave it does default back after you're done next one is the food menu button this is kind of like a smart feature where it just cooks based on what it knows for what you tell it you're cooking so like if you want to cook you just like hit start and you can go through any manner of foods. I'm going to go down to chicken just to show you the features of chicken and click in there and it tells me use the pan with the legs for my chicken. Now if I was doing a big chicken of course I can't have the pan up high if it's a big chicken but you can do from eight ounces all the way up to four and a half pounds. So if you got a four and a half pound you know, piece of chicken is going to be too large to have the legs up high. You'll have to have them down low, of course. And this is your start button. Also, you can add 30 seconds by pressing that button. It's also a dial for your options, as you've seen. Your stop clear button, you press it once to pause, twice to clear, and it's got a knob also. Over here is the a bit more button. You press that button, it adds a bit more time based on the cook function that you're in, it will add the amount of time that it feels is appropriate. And here's the turntable off button. Basically, if you want to turn the turntable off, you press that. The turntable will spin basically in all the cooking functions unless you turn it off. Now I'm going to show you inside. There are buttons even inside on the door here. There's a favorite button. You can set a favorite to whatever favorite you want to always be able to quickly access. Child lock button. There's a units button, you know, depending on what type of units you like to use in your cooks. There's a set clock button, that's how I set the clock on this cooker. And the clock does have like a 12 hour or 24 hour option. If you use the 12 hour option like I have, you have AM, PM, to let you know if it's AM or PM. There's a quick start menu button, you press that, it just goes right to the microwave if you want to get started cooking. There's a keep warm button. If you want it to just keep some food warm, you could press your keep warm button. There's a melt chocolate button. You could press that if you want to melt some chocolate. You tell it how many ounces and it'll start microwaving it. 
and it's not supposed to cause any problems or splatter or anything. There's a soften butter button. You can press that to soften butter. It's not supposed to fully melt it, but just soften it with no splatter. There's a popcorn button. You can press that and tell it how big of a bag of popcorn you're using. It expects like the bag popcorn. There's a sound button. You can adjust the type of chime. So if I press sound, you know, that's the type of sound I'm using. Or press it again, give you that traditional beeping. But I like that sound that, like that there. There's a beep volume button. You can press that and adjust the loudness. I keep it low. There's a mute button. You can just mute things out or unmute. All right, I want to mention with this cooker, it's probably not a good idea to try an external meat probe that has a cord that would go through the door because this is a microwave seal type of door. And so it's not supposed to have anything kind of in between this type of a door at all. So I would not recommend using any type of a corded meat probe with this. If you want to use some type of meat probe in your cooks, I would recommend that you consider getting a wireless type of a meat probe that you can use with the oven functions, not with the microwave functions. All right, I want to show you how to use the favorite feature that's on the inside door here. You only get to set one favorite. But what you do is you basically set up the cook that you want to be your favorite. So I'm going to do air fry. I just press it once to wake the combi wave up from the clock. And then now that it's in air fry, I'm going down to two minutes of cooking time. This is just to be able to quickly heat frozen waffles. This works out well. Two minutes, 450 degrees. You hold the favorite button for about two seconds. And then you see favorite came up. So now if I basically clear out of here, go back to the clock. Now I hit favorite, it wakes things up. And then I press it again and it goes right to my air fry, two minute, 450 degrees. When you're on the clock, any button that you press is gonna just basically fully wake things up and then you press it again to get into your, what you actually want it to do. And so there's my favorite, quick and easy. Now I wanna show you this grill button that's on the inside of the panel here, this inside panel, there's a grill button. And you can use that to basically gently brown food. You use your crisper pan in the high position and basically you can press grill. I'm just waking up, then I hit grill and it tells me to use the pan with the legs. It can do up to about 10 minutes. And basically you would just start like that and it would just start browning your food. And for the grill feature, it's just a time. It doesn't give you a temperature. You would just start and it would just start immediately browning. It just uses the top heating element to brown things. And you can adjust the time on that grill feature, even though it defaults to 10. You can go up to 20 minutes. So you can go like as low as you want and you can go up to 20. All right, I want to show you some of the features in the food menu option that are some pretty smart features. You can go in here and you can do like go down to reheat and it'll do a smart reheat. So you press in, you can do by time, you can do if you just want to do a type like a beverage, you can do just like leftovers, you can go in and ask how many plates of leftovers, you can do up to two plates of leftovers with smart reheat. Also in the food menu option, you can go into a defrost option, and it's like a smart defrost. So you go in there and you can select what you're going to defrost and select different options of food or by time. You select the food, it'll ask you how big the food is, how many ounces. In the food menu, if you go into that and you want to cook meat, so I click start going to that, and I just go down to meat, not uh, like chicken, but if you just wanted to cook a big piece of meat, you can go in and you can cook a piece of meat using the pan with the legs up from eight ounces up to, it says up to four pounds for meat. And the food menu option for cook has many other options. I mean, basically anything you want to think of, they've got already in there and set in certain, you know, units and amounts. So a lot of uh, good options and features there for cooking different types of foods automatically. All right, so let's cook up some bacon in the Brevo Combi Wave. Now the first thing you see is that I've got my bacon on a regular plate. You don't use that 
uh, CRISPR pan when you're doing microwave type functions and this combi wave when it does its bacon function its smart cook bacon function it uses its microwave so we're going to do that to use its smart cook option to turn it on you just tap any button basically so it comes on and I click on the food menu and then I'm on cook and I'm going to press the start button to go into cook now I've got options I'm going to spin down to bacon so I want bacon and now I'm going to press the start button in and now it says adjust quantity so I'm going to go up to four slices I'm going to put my bacon inside here now so that it's already in and close the door now I'm using thick slice bacon so they say with thick slice you're supposed to add a minute so what I'm going to do I'm going to go ahead and let it start and then I'm going to increase time so click start and it shows five minutes now I'm going to click add 30 seconds and then add 30 seconds again and that's an instant add 30 seconds so I've gone up to six minutes and so our bacon's cooking All right, now it's time because it wants me to basically flip this bacon. So it gives me that time to let me know it's time to flip the bacon. I'm supposed to flip and move the inner slices to the outside. So I'm going to do that. All right, I'm going to close the door. Click start, continue to cook. I like that even though I added time, it knew where the halfway point was anyway and chime to let me know it's time to flip that bacon over. All right, this time is up and the cook is over. Let's see what's going on in there. Looks like my bacon's not done. My thick sliced bacon is not done. Plate very hot, I can tell you that, but not done. So so there's a, a bit more button over here. I'm going to try and add a bit more time. So I've just pressed a bit more and it goes up about 36 seconds. I'm going to press a bit more again. Well, it's not going to do it again. But the a bit more button, which is right over here over start, when something's not fully cooked, you can press a bit more and it will just automatically add more time. But I don't think 30 seconds is going to get it. So I'm going to add 30 more seconds add another minute so basically another 90 seconds and we'll see if it's done in basically seven and a half minutes or a little more than seven and a half minutes all right so now in seven and a half minutes we'll see what's going on in there i'm going to open up when it's done all right now we got some really crisp up bacon so it took a little longer than expected but uh It did finish and this is thick very long thick cut bacon it's not like your short thick cut bacon so it took about seven and a half minutes it took a minute and a half longer than their uh, estimates they you know start out with five if it was like regular small slice bacon and then you add a minute for a thick cut and then I guess this is some thicker longer bacon but it did eventually you know finish microwaving the bacon and of course after a cook of bacon you're going to have, you know, stuff that's splattered around, you know, so you have to deal with that if you're going to microwave some bacon in this cooker. It's going to, you know, make a bit of a mess. You could, you know, cover with a paper towel and try it that way. I'm sure someone would recommend that. I wanted to just do it exactly as their manual mentions without any additional of, you know, anything additional just to see how things would turn out. All right, one thing I want to point out is that after you use this for something like cooking bacon that causes a bunch of grease and splatter, you've got to clean the inside of this thing extremely very well. I mean, all over, top, bottom, everywhere. Because if you've got grease that's splattered all over this thing and then you go to try and use like the oven function to try and, you know, bake or air fry even, any of that grease is going to cause you a bunch of smoke in the oven function from when you were using the microwave function. So make sure that you clean this well between uses so that 
when you're using a different function that might cause some ex excess stuff that was put on the walls and stuff to cause smoke you want to avoid that all right so i'm going to test smart cooking some chicken nuggets and so i'm going to basically just wake things up go into the food menu go into cook and i'm going to dial down to nuggets now that i'm in nuggets i just hit start it asks me how big are the amount of nuggets so it does like from eight ounces up to a pound of nuggets i'm just going to leave it at um, the eight ounces i'm not really sure how many i'll need it tells me to use the pan with the legs i've already got that in there to preheat and so I'm going to click start it does the three minute preheat i'll bring you back to get those nuggets in All right, the three minute preheat's almost done. Got my frozen chicken nuggets. Gonna get ready to put them in there as soon as this preheat finishes. Preheat's done. It goes to 12 minutes for the cooking time. So it expects to cook these in just 12 minutes. And I probably got less than eight ounces, a lot less than eight ounces on here, but we're gonna go with it and we'll see what it does in basically 12 minutes of cooking time plus that three heat, the preheat. It means that it's basically gonna have 15 minutes of the oven running but only 12 minutes of cooking and we'll see if it does this if it does these nuggets well in 12 minutes it's got the amazon smart oven beat hands down i forgot to hit start to start to cook whenever you open the door and you close it again you got to make sure to hit start because when you close the door it doesn't auto start all right a moment ago it chimed and i think it wanted me to flip the food over so i'm going to open up and it auto pauses. I'm going to flip the nuggets over. You probably don't have to, but I'm going to anyway just because we're going to see how things go when you do them the way they really, really want you to. So I'm going to hit start and I'll bring you back. All right, we're coming to the end of this 12 minute run with the three minute preheat. It auto set itself 425 degrees Fahrenheit. For these chicken nuggets, I got my thermopan. Going to get in there and check their temperature. I hear some sizzling. They are one night over 200 degrees. Wow, that fast. This thing is a true combination cooker, microwave, air fryer. All right, so let's cook up some crescent rolls. These have to be cooked between, uh, let's see. 9 to 12 minutes at 375 so I'm going to hit the oven button and now that I'm in oven I'm going to down the temp well the time to 12 minutes up the temperature to 375 it mentions to use the trivet I have the trivet setting there for the preheat and so hit start it goes right into its preheat and I'll bring you back after this is preheated. We'll get the crescent rolls in there. All right, the preheat finished in about eight, uh, maybe less than nine. I'm only reading about 200, 266 on the bottom but it is glass so not sure but putting those in and hitting start and we'll see how things really do based on how these cook I'll bring you back all right we're coming into the final seconds of the 12 minute cook I'm going to check the temp of the pan that black pan that's in there once it ends the pan is reading about 349 I don't think that my crescent rolls are fully done yet you see they're they're looking kind of light to me I'm gonna give them like another another three minutes or so so I'm turning the time down to about three minutes and I think it's probably gonna go right into a preheat anyway so we'll just let it set as long as we think it needs in order to you know get these cooked it looks like it's not you know it is preheating time isn't moving so it's going back through its preheat process again and then it'll count down the cook but I'll just pull these when I think they look like they're done I think they're near done 
it did do a uh, preheat in about eight to nine minutes, which you know is slower than a lot of other cookers, but not as slow as the Amazon Smart Oven. So it does have that one beat. So the only cooker in its class, combination cooker, it does preheat faster, like almost twice as fast as that cooker. Just to see, I'm going to turn the time down to zero so that as soon as it preheats it basically, well turn it down like one second so that as soon as it's done preheating we can try hitting that a bit more just to see what the a bit more button would have done in a case like this. Alright, so it did it and I'm going, I'm going to hit a bit more well, it's not, not letting me do anything with a bit more. So if I hit stop and hit a bit more. Yeah, so I hit a bit more after I hit stop and it gave it an extra minute without trying to do any like preheat or anything of that nature. So that's pretty cool. Alright, so time's about to be up here. It's going to go ahead and open up. I think these crescent rolls look uh, fairly decent now. Let me get them off the trivet. Yeah, these are, they're good to go. So basically what we learned from this is that the cooker, you know, all these, you know, Amazon took longer, this one took a while, but this one's faster, but they all seem to take a while on baking preheat, although the mileage may vary as far as how long. They both, this one and the Amazon Smart Oven, took longer than they should have to bake the crescent rolls. Both took you know, a few minutes longer than they normally would in a conventional oven or a other type of convection toaster oven. So they all seem to bake a little slow but this one the Breville Combi Wave did get to preheat faster so that our overall cook was done quicker. So it still beats out the Amazon Smart Oven and the few minutes that had to take a little longer wasn't too bad in this case. All right, so let's test out the softened butter feature. This is some butter straight from the refrigerator. It's supposed to be able to soften it without melting it. And you're supposed to just take your butter and put it into a microwave safe container. So I'm just going to put it into this bowl here. Once I can get this very cool butter out of here. Got our butter in the container. Now we just put the container in the microwave. We hit the soften butter button and it goes to asking how many ounces. I have four ounces. So I'm just going to close up and just press start. And we'll see how this does. All right, the time's coming to an end. And so going to check it out. I did hear it adjust a little as it was running I guess it does different power settings or something but it wasn't constant how it was running my knife does go through my butter pretty nice over here on the end it's a little cool it's a little cool there but I think it did a pretty decent job of softening it we got a little little melt in the bottom but overall I mean this is better than I've seen from any microwave before this one alright so now we're gonna test the smart reheat and so I've got a plate of food here, got some turkey, some rice, some broccoli. Got those chicken nuggets. I put them in the fridge for a while for them to get cool as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put a cover on here. And for you who feel that a cover should not be used, I just say read the manual. Now I'm going to put this in. Now that I've got it in, that nice soft close. All right, now that I've got the food in, I'm going to press the food menu button. I'm going to scroll with the second dial to reheat. Press the start button to go into the reheat options. Scroll down to leftovers. Press in. How many plates of food? I have just one plate of food. Hit start. And we're going to let that run. And we'll see how this goes. Alright, the smart reheat is about to be done. I did hear it 
Um, just chime once, I guess, if I want it to flip things or something. Alright, so now I'm checking temperature in that turkey. It's reading about 125, 124. Some areas it's reading just 90. That's closer to the center. No, it's, it's actually 141 down here. So, yeah, it's in the 120s, 140s. Let's check a chicken nugget. Chicken nuggets is 99, 200 degrees. Yeah, chicken nuggets are nice and hot, so not overheated. You know, the chicken nuggets are a little hot, but overall, I think it did pretty good considering the mix that I threw at it. I think that it did do better overall than the Amazon Smart Oven doing a cook as a plate of food for a reheat. And so, I definitely like it. It did not, you know, super overheat things like the Amazon Smart Oven. A cover on as the manual prescribes did a reheat and it did it just right and so I'm good with that so for cleaning the Breville combi wave 3 in 1 it's pretty simple everything by hand nothing in a dishwasher they recommend that you use like a damp cloth to wipe the inside of the microwave just like you would you know clean any other microwave out and the other parts the accessories wash them by hand warm soapy water and so that's pretty straightforward and simple. I haven't found cleaning it to be much trouble at all. I mean, wiping the inside out is just like, you know, cleaning out any other microwave. You know, nothing really sticks to the interior, so you can wipe it all off. The crisper pan is non-stick. And so, you know, everything washes pretty easy. All right, so the Brevo Combi Wave 3 in 1, I think it did pretty well. I mean, there are only two cookers in this class. There's the Brevo Combi Wave 3 in 1, and the new Amazon Smart Oven, both of them are new. And the Breville Combi Wave, in my opinion, blows the Amazon Smart Oven out the water. I mean, to me, the Amazon Smart Oven is nothing but a microwave, and it's not even very good at that when it comes to like scan and cook and that other stuff that they threw in there. This Breville Combi Wave, it doesn't have scan to cook. It doesn't have a meat probe. You can't talk to an assistant with it. So what? it does the job right. It does um, microwaving well. It does sense reheat well. It does air frying well. The pan that they give you, that crisper pan, works out well. It all works out good. Also, the oven part, it preheats faster on the oven. And it also, when it cooks, you've got like the a bit more button you can throw on there. It, things turn out pretty well. I think it turned out better overall with everything than the Amazon Smart Oven by far. I mean, the Amazon Smart Oven, I started a return the moment I finished that review because I was so disappointed and I didn't want to keep that. The uh, Breville Combi Wave 3-in-1, you'll be seeing more of it. I like it. I mean, it's a combination cooker, so I don't expect it to be the perfect cooker in all respects. You know, it's not going to do better than something that's more dedicated to baking. It's probably not going to do better than something that's more dedicated to air frying, but it does well for its combination of features. So far it's working out well. I'll have more, Lord willing, in a 30-day review, you know, sometime later of this cooker. But for now, what I can compare it with is the Amazon Smart Oven, and it beats it by leaps and bounds because what it does, it does well. It's got a lot of nice features. It's got, you know, able to melt the butter and you know, it can melt the chocolate and stuff like that. So, lots of great features, lots of great stuff. I'm going to be enjoying this. And, you know, you can basically find links for other cookers in the video description. This one's not sold through Amazon, though, but those are referral links to Amazon. You pay the same price to help this channel. But you can find recipes for lots of cookers at superwaveovenrecipes.com. You can always come to this YouTube channel by going to waveovenrecipes.com. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at waveovenrecipes. Also, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share the video with a friend, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments, hit that notification bell, and good eating.